Hello beings of Earth, welcome to my subsection of YouTube where I'm about to reveal how I spent the last two months of my life in around 12 minutes. Like most people I know, I grew up watching and loving a lot of Barbie movies, and I've always wanted my own Barbie gown despite hating dresses, so I finally decided to make this dream come true and make my very own Princess Annalise cosplay from The Princess and the Pauper. I picked Annalise because I feel like she has this quintessential Barbie princess look, and that's what makes her look so iconic. I started by putting on my hoop skirt, which I got secondhand from eBay and edited to my size, and measured my hips, the distance to the floor, and the distance from my feet to where the skirt will eventually fall, so I can calculate the circumference of the bottom of my skirt. Do you know what I mean, Buzz? So with the measurements, I've made myself a giant pattern that is made out of old magazine, and it's basically just a giant triangle that I'm going to have one on the front, one on each side, one on the back, and then I'm going to use a half end from between each of my panels. I really hope this works, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> I ended up cutting out 24 triangles in total from the underskirt, which when sewn together created three three-third circle skirts. For this I used a baby pink poly cotton fabric, which is quite light and most importantly, won't need ironing. So I have this bias binding that I bought for details, but I'm also going to cut a length of this and use it as a waistband, just so I have something to sew all the skirt layers onto, which I know is going to be the exact same size as my waist. Once the waistband was attached, it was actually looking and sitting exactly how I wanted it to, so I moved on to the overlay. Using the same triangle pattern as before, I cut out 8 more panels, this time from Pink Organza, then attached them all together in the exact same way I did before. So the organza kind of pulls on itself, which means it's not very even at the bottom. So I'm going to add some gold bias binding onto the bottom just to give it a little bit more structure. I found that organza is slightly harder to sew than the cotton, so you have to be a little bit more patient with it. But it looks really pretty when done, especially after adding the gold bias binding all the way around the bottom as a finishing touch. To help myself out with the bodice section, I made a mock-up out of cotton drill, which I fitted to myself over many, many, many alterations. All I did then was cut it into pieces, iron it flat, and then use it as a pattern for the real thing. Now that I've got all my pieces, I've laid them out on this fabric, and I've double layered it so I don't have to cut out multiple pieces. For the final look, I decided to use a light pink cotton with a really delicate white flower motif. So I've left a really big gap around my pieces, and the reason for that is I'm going to line each piece individually with the same fabric I used for the skirt. And I don't want the folds to look awkward when I sew the final thing, so I'm just giving myself an extra bit of room to sew these pieces together. Finally have all eight pieces done. <laughs> this took a very long time. So now I'm going to sew the lining onto the front pieces and then see what we need to do next. To get the crisscross detail, I made a little diamond out of paper and I'm just pinning it down and then doing the lines around it. I'm just going to continue it all over. This was by far the longest and most tedious task of the whole process. It's really annoying to get all the ribbons down flat and at the right angle and then even more annoying to sew them into place without accidentally bunching them up. However, I don't think the final look would look nearly as recognisable without this added detail, so I'm very happy I added it. After many, many hours, these are finally done. So now I'm going to sew these pieces together and actually make the bottom. So these don't match up at all. I have no idea how to do that. So I can fit this properly, I'm going to temporarily put the zip on the back of it, just so I can stop asking people to pin me into it like 2,000 times. At this point my fabric was looking really great, but the fit was really bad. I think I ended up taking every single seam in the end, just to try and make it look halfway decent and not really bunchy. Why is it going blue? Why? What? But once that was done, it was looking good and it was time to move on to details. I'm going to do the neckline next, as this is obviously nowhere near what I need to do for I drew a line where I wanted my new neckline while I was wearing the bodice, just to make it much easier. So I sewed along the line I drew and then cut just above it, as this is where it's going to fold over eventually. But for now I'm going to make my ruffles so that I can have the sleeves on, as I want to put the ruffles on the end of the sleeves before I sew them to the actual thing, so I'm not sewing around a really tight hole. I'm now very, very carefully cutting out long strips that I'm going to use for the ruffles. I'm using white organza and then the the same pink organza we use for the skirt. And then I'm going to go back in with the bias binding and do one side of it just to make it a little bit more pretty. The bias binding is also featured with the actual dress showcased in the film, so it definitely had to be done. I just want to quickly add that I've made these pieces 1.5 times longer than the length they need to cover so that I can do little ruffles on them as it's more accurate to the design of her costume. Once the ruffles were on, I sewed the sleeves together and mentally prepared myself for the nightmare of attaching them to the bodice. If you wanted to know the hardest part of sewing a dress, it is for sure sewing on the sleeves. I need to shorten the sleeves and basically my plan is to just kind of 
tuck it up on itself and then sew across and hope that it works. It might get a bit bunchy inside but oh well. Hopefully it'll just look a bit better because it looks slightly too long and I don't really like it. I had to do this process by hand because it's far too fiddly to do with the machine but it actually turned out pretty good for my terrible hand sewing skills. I have two sleeves. I messed up a little bit on this shoulder. You see the little bit of weirdness. I'm gonna go back in and sew that down a bit more. But other than that, I need to move on to the boning now. I'm using sew on boning just to make it easier. I don't really know how to make the channels, so we're just doing this instead. I'm gonna lay it basically just where the seams are. So I thought you could just sew down the middle of this boning. Apparently that's not what you're meant to do. You're meant to sew the fabric around the bone. It worked out well for the most part, but I did break a needle at one point. So be really careful if you're like me and don't want to do the extra sewing. Next I pinned a white panel on the front of my bodice. I basically just folded it in on itself until it was the perfect rectangle shape. Before I sew this down I'm going to add more ruffles. I need to cut these down to half size so they can be more like that. But they're going to go all the way around. This white panel on ruffle situation is my favourite part of the dress and honestly it's the reason I picked this outfit over any of the other Barbies. It makes you look so high class and fancy. And it's not even a really complicated thing to add. I've made this little tiny rose, it took forever. But I just made it out of the same fabric I made the skirt out of. And that's gonna go right there, which is just at the top of the bodice. It looks a bit messy, but I kind of like it. It's kind of rusticky. I'm happy. The next thing I need to do is sew my zip permanently. It's currently sewn like this, as I just wanted to be able to get in and out of it to size it. But I'm going to bring it down to where the zip ends. And then also there'll be a little bit more gap at the bottom so I can put the skirt on. I'm on the last step of the bodice, so I just need to add my final ruffle. I'm going to go around the bottom. This one's pink so it matches the skirt a bit more. With the bodice all done, I put it on alongside the skirt so I could pin them together in the correct place and finally make this into a full dress and never have to sew another piece of pink fabric ever again. I'm now going to do some makeup. For my base, I'm going to use the Maybelline New York Superstay 24 Hour Full Coverage Foundation. Put that all over with a sponge. Quite excited today because I got a new brush set. This is a Unicorn Cosmetics brush set. It's just their Unicorn one, but it's like the second version, so it's got a teal packaging instead of the black. I think it looks gorgeous. I'm going to start with the powder brush, and I'm going to go in with my NYX setting powder. It feels a little bit plasticky. They are synthetic, so they are going to be quite plasticky, but it moves across the skin quite nicely. I'm now going to do my eyebrows, and for that I'm going to use the James Charles palette. Now, Barbie has very, very light eyebrows. I'm going to go in with this colour here. And then maybe a little bit of the one above it just to blend it in the skin a bit more. And for that I'm going to use the little tiny angle brush. For my brows I'm going to follow where my actual eyebrows are. My natural eyebrows kind of come down like this. I'm going to go a bit above that just to make them more arc. To get the perfect arc you want to put your brush against your nose and then through the pupil. And where the end of the brush is that's where your arc is. This brush is the perfect size so that you can use like the flat of it to do the front because it's the thickness that I want for my brows. Obviously if you want different thicknesses it's not going to be that useful. Anyway those are some very light blonde eyebrows. I'm thinking I should darken up just the tails but I feel like I'm going to regret it. Just one of my normal brushes. This is a paintbrush. And I'm going to go in with this one here. I think that looks better just with a slightly modified tail. Eyebrows on. I'm going to do the base eyes, so I'm going to take this brush, this is like a small little packing brush, the light pink in this palette, and blend it into the outer corner, just because it's Barbie, I feel like you have to have pink when it's Barbie. This brush is a little bit scratchy, it's weird, it's soft, but it's also scratchy. I'm going to go in with this brush now, and I'm going to go in with a tiny little bit of the neon pink in the bottom corner, my favourite colour in the palette, you can probably tell by the fact that it's the most used. I feel like that's quite Barbie. I'm now going to go in with this shade, which is kind of like a shimmery, very light pink colour, and use that on the front of the eye. I don't think I've ever used this colour, it's so nice. I'm going to go back in with my light pink brush and do it underneath. The inner corner, I'm going to use this one. I was going to put black eyeliner on this, but I don't think it's really going to work. So, what I think I'm going to do instead is do like a soft brown. I'm going to go in with the same brown I used to darken the tails of my brows on a small cut up paintbrush, my favourite brush. I think that looks quite good. I'm going to use a Jumbo pencil in white for waterline because it's a little bit more dolly. Can you see the difference? I think it makes a big difference actually. Because Barbie is blonde, I'm going to leave my eyelashes as is. I don't want them to be really, really obvious and really, really black. I believe this is a contour brush and that's why it's got like an angle to it. 
But I'm going to use it as a blush brush. So I'm going to go in with the same light pink, again from the James Charles palette. You can see my natural blend is like peeking through anyway. I think that'll be good for the blush. For the lips, I'm going to use the only natural lipstick I own, which is the Powder Puff Lippy in Squad Worlds from NYX. I'm just going to use it on the centre of my lips and then blend it out with my finger. This will just bring the base colour of my lips back in. And then to bring more of the Barbie colour, I'm going to go in with the brighter pink on the centre from a brand that I went mention because I don't support them and don't want to give them free promotion and then I'm going to take the tiny little fan brush which is so cute and then I'm going to go in with the only shade in the James Charles palette that I know the name of face this one here and I only know it because James Charles says it all the time in his videos because he uses it as his highlight now for the exciting bit my wig this is my first ever lace front wig can't remember the brand off the top of my head so I'll put it on the screen for you I don't have much hair I don't know if there's any point in wearing wig caps So this is the finished makeup and hair. Let's put the dress on and finally finish. Thank you so much for watching this video it was a long time in the making and i really hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to hit the like then subscribe and leave a comment telling me what else you would like me to do but it's goodbye for now